St. Andrews is a moody, broody, beautiful, haunting place of great scholarship, of great minds, and just an astonishing place. What I really remember about St. Andrews is just the sheer beauty of the place. Just aesthetically, there's really nowhere like it, and I think that's why photographers have been drawn there for years. St. Andrews is such an ancient and well-worn place that it has persisted in my memory from the time I first went there as a very young student at a very ancient university. A kind of wise mist enveloped the place, and it seemed that we couldn't help but absorbing it unwittingly. But how did our university come to be founded out here on the east coast of Scotland? How did it come to be called St. Andrews? Well, <laughs> as legend has it, an angel appears to St. Rule on the Greek Isle of Patras and says, take the relics of the blessed Andrew. Take them across the seas to the far northwest until you reach the end of the world. St. Rule, bearing the sacred relics of St. Andrew, is welcomed by Angus, King of the Picts, at Kilrymond, his royal retreat, deep in the woods of Fife. Kilrymont, the king's seat, shall be born again and christened as St. Andrews. Since the wars of independence with England in the 14th century, Scottish students were driven from Oxford and Cambridge to the University of Paris. But even there, life for the students and the masters began to get difficult too. So much so that the masters, led by Bishop Wardlaw, began to consider founding their own university back home in Scotland. But in order for this to become fully official in medieval terms, it required the blessing of the Pope. In 1394, Pedro de Luna, a Spanish cardinal of noble birth, received the papal tiara as Benedict XIII, known affectionately as Papa Luna. So it was in his castle of Pensacola on the Mediterranean that Papa Luna drafted St. Andrew's six papal bulls. The crescent moon of Papa Luna Pope Benedict XIII joins the golden diamonds of Bishop Henry Wardlaw, along with the royal lion rampant of King James, the blue of St. Andrew's cross together with the Book of Learning, all combine to create the university's coat of arms. Three of the greatest poets of the Scottish Renaissance graduated here.
And there were those who left St. Andrews to change the world. James Wilson, who signed both the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution, became one of the first justices on the Supreme Court. Benjamin Franklin was granted Doctor of Laws by St. Andrews in 1759 in the spirit of the Scottish Enlightenment. The honor was inscribed to the ingenious and worthy Benjamin Franklin, not only for the rectitude of his morals and sweetness of his life and conversation, but also for his ingenious inventions, especially of electricity which hitherto was little known. James Gregory worked here at a time when the world was still just emerging from the medieval period. People still believed in astrology and alchemy, and Gregory was the first to be recognized as a modern scientist in St. Andrews. One of the earliest characters associated with photonics or the science of light at St Andrews was of course James Gregory. He shone light through a bird's feather and observed a phenomenon called interference. The idea that John Allen and I had originally working together was that we would use light emitting diodes as a source for photodynamic therapy, a therapy of skin cancers. And of course John was the inventor of the light emitting diode we developed devices to allow us to use marine mammals to study the ocean. One of the animals that's been most useful in terms of carrying this equipment to remote parts of the world's oceans is the southern elephant seal. This is a species that covers vast distances. They can swim 7,000 kilometers. These animals are known to dive to below 2,000 meters in depth. So we've effectively made the animals our partners in getting valuable data about the oceans. St. Andrews now is the only producer of these devices in the world. And these devices are now sending vast amounts of oceanographic data for everyone on the planet to use. 